Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the Seed Story Cup number three. Today here with me again, number guy, he already joined us yesterday and I'm very happy that you're here again. Thank you. And we got some crazy games ahead of us. We got Firebat, the reigning world champion here, now going up against Faramir. That will be the first game we are covering today. And yeah, it's already day two of the Seed Story Cup. We had some crazy action yesterday. We saw some sick games. Number Guy was playing himself, unfortunately eliminated, but he did his best and we really can't blame him for, for having misplays. Thank you. <laughs> Yeah, we are just about to, to get started. Everything is just, uh, yeah, getting started. The players just woke up like an hour ago. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> just like the rest of us. <laughs> yeah, it was it was a long night, having fun and party and poker and Yeah, all because of it. that's what the Seed Star Cup is all about. It's about exactly. having a house cup and having fun. To me, it's the... To watch and to be here is... It's the best eSport event that is there in the world it's Definitely. it got more viewers than the world championships so that means something and also for the players it's pretty chill to hang out here to play poker to drink stuff and yeah and we have 32 players which is way more than at the world championship and um, also we get to cast all of the games not there's no games that's gonna be played off stream which is amazing uh, we have two streams running all the time so we can watch all the games Exactly, and are you jumping into the game already? Are the players yes. good to go? And we are seeing Paladin versus Druid in the first game. I believe, yeah, Firebat is playing the Paladin and Faramir is playing the Druid. Yeah, very nice lineup here, as you said. Paladin against the Druid. And uh, many people do not give any edge to any of those classes here. Many people say, many pro players say it's a 50-50. I would not agree to that. In my opinion, because of the swipes if, and the Harrison Jones we already see by Faramir, I would give the edge to the Druid. Do you agree to that? Yeah, I definitely agree. I will give a small edge to the Druid. Um, what I commonly hear here for other pro players is that if you have Wild Grove, you're heavily favored, and if you don't have it, you're unfavored. Um, but I actually find myself winning quite a lot of games, even without the White Grove. Um, especially if you are playing that version with the Harrison Jones, as we see Faramir is. Yeah, that's a key card really in that match. So if you can like draw like so three cards from that Light Justice that comes with the Master 4 battle. It's pretty much a GG. Firebat goes for the aggression here. He coins out the Knife Juggler and uh, that leaves Faramir usually on turn 2. Against the knife juggler, you want to do something like Wrath or at least play your own Wild Grove. Or oh, innervate the keeper, but he doesn't keeper. have any of these options right here. Really bad situation. Yeah, for him. Faramir's off to a very slow start, and now Firebat even top decking that second knife juggler. He can put on more pressure following that out with a masterful battle with six juggles. That's so much damage, and still here, yeah. nothing to play for. Oh, Faramir. Faramir instantly just makes another hero power. I would definitely have played the Savage Roll there. I think so maybe he's like like so a little bit quickly right here. Yeah, well, he's preparing a big swipe. He's expecting the master for battle now, and that's also what yeah. Firebat has to think about. And he goes for the shield mini, but playing around that swipe, and that's very smart here to keep that master for battle. Yeah, I mean, like, Faramir pretty much told Firebat, I have swipe in my hand. Here, go, go play your master, and... Um, yeah, and there we go. Finally, the swipe comes off, but next turn for Firebat. Very nice here to play the Masterful Battle if he wants to, because one swipe is already gone. Yeah, exactly. And that's exactly the point where you want to saturate the board a bit more. Definitely. But this actually works out quite good for Faramir, because he gets, gets to play the Harrison Jones here, draw three cards. Maybe he can draw into the second swipe. Exactly um, what we were talking about before. If, obviously, if Firebat were to top deck a Quartermaster, it would be terrible. Uh, for Faramir, but he doesn't have it. He's also pretty nice off with the Sludge Belcher, that's pretty decent here. You could also go for the Elder Peacekeeper I like here. the Elder Peacekeeper way more. You have two Elder Pe Peacekeepers in your hand, you want to get them out of your hand. Um, yeah. Five Attack is probably the best Peacekeeper you're gonna get, a get against Druid anyway. I agree to that, it's very nice, and he has the equality banking his hand up, and it's a lot of pressure now on the board, and even if Faramir plays a taunt like a Druid of the Claw, Hi, that my equality name is will easily I'm take care of that, right and how much damage do we have on the board, this is 9 damage here on the board, unfortunately he would have to trade one dude into that taunt, so not just representing lethal here. 
yeah, Faramir goes for the Wrath and the... Uh, and the Shredder, I can't fault him for it. I wouldn't have faulted him either if he had played the Wrath for one and trying to get the Swipe. He is pretty deep down in his deck, so it's pretty unlikely, but maybe Swipe would have been a ball clear, so I wouldn't have faulted him for going for it as well. And Firebat decides to go for the second Eldor Peacekeeper here. Again, just continue pushing, putting on the pressure. I really like this decision by him. Um, Faramir is under so From much Wild pressure. Show, when it's fashion week, I do like all my casting, really feedings, well, maybe well, shows, you know. Combo, it's really hard to keep relationships so with my friends and everything. And just traveling, like living on the plane, here. you know. But once I come, oh, like for two days, it's a very like... You have to expect an equality coming out of the Paladin. I mean, if you use the combo here, you can clear the board, um, so that's not too bad. What to do? Um, the other options is to play the taunt and try and hero power down something, but I think I'll go for the combo here, clearing the board, getting rid of everything. You're still at 3 health, uh, Druid or oh, Paladin doesn't have that much reach, so if he doesn't have true silver, you basically can't die. Um, so I like seeing the combo here clearing off Firebat's ball. I totally agree to that. And yeah, it also depends on what Firebat is drawing now because Faramir is really dealing with the board like that pretty easily here. Yeah, and we do see an interesting card in the Paladin's hand. We do see the Ragnaros, a card we not normally see in these mid-range Paladins. We've even seen uh, popular players like Trump trying not to run any 7 attack minions or higher to totally play around the big game hunter. Um, Fire, um, Firebat here not choosing to go with that line. That Sludge Belcher is also s troublesome now for Faramir because there's no easy way to get around that. So I expect him this turn to to just taunt up here. You have to use your taunt, maybe play your Shade of Next Ramas. I, I think I would go for the Savage Roar. With the Savage Roar you, uh, you can clear the Belcher completely and you can taunt up. Well, well, but if you taunt up, then you're down to, to 2 HP health. and yeah. you're in Consecration range. And it doesn't feel too good to be <laughs> in that range. I think I'll go for it anyway. Um, Faramir, however, chooses not to go for it. Um, I don't know, I think, I think it's fine. I think I would have preferred to go for it slightly more aggressive. Now he dies to equality, it's kind of like pick and choose, you would also die to Owl this way, um, there's some more cards you uh, die to this way than if you choose to clear it, but... Yeah, you, you're right, it would have actually been better to, to just uh, make you die to Consecration, because the chances, as you already pointed out, there are just two Consecrations in the deck, Yeah. but you have an Owl and probably two Equality, so that's a three outs against two outs. Yeah, that would also be something like maybe... A quartermaster would also be pretty good. Um. Yeah, it totally makes sense. Uh. Anyway, game one goes to Firebat here, putting on a lot of pressure with his paladin, and so that means Firebat is left with a mage and a hunter. Paladin already won a game, and we are jumping into the next game between those players. Yeah, which is the Firebats Hunter versus Faramir. Faramir actually chose, unlike almost every other player in this tournament, we have seen not to ban the Hunter. Versus um, Faramir. Firebats Hunter versus Faramir. <laughs> versus Faramir's warrior, is yeah, what you meant, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, Faramir is playing with the Faramir class, with the warrior. Yeah. And Firebat picks his Hunter here. It could still be a mid-range Hunter, but I expect to see a face Hunter. Because Face Hunter is so popular among, well, not only among pro players, among all the players. Yeah, um, I wouldn't be too surprised to see a mid range Hunter, but I also think we're gonna see. I also think a Face Hunter is very likely. Firebat has talked to me about how he thinks. Oh! But it's a mid range Hunter. It's a mid range Hunter. There we but go. It's actually quite funny because Firebat has told me how he thinks that Face Hunter is really strong at the moment, and then he goes and brings Mid Range Hunter. Yeah. So maybe he tried to mind game me a little <laughs> yeah, bit. Yeah, definitely. Firebat sneaking in some mind games here. But you know what? I really like the bring uh, that he chose to brought 
playing the mid range Honda. Me I, too. I played mid range Honda as well, so. Um, I also choose mid range Hunter over face Hunter these days in tournaments because you have a nice matchup against Druid, you have a nice matchup also against the Warrior that's very winnable here with the Savannah High main, with Dr. Boom, with the Ragnaros, you can deal a lot of damage and that totally makes that matchup way better than just going with the face Hunter and then potentially running into that Doctor into that Doctor Boom into that Sludge Bowser and that, sh uh, and that uh, Shield main. So yeah, I also think it's uh, he expected a lot of Honda bans. So he thought if my opponent is not gonna ban Honda, it probably means he has Warrior in his lineup. And against Warrior, the mid range Honda is very good. It's uh, a very common uh, idea that is used by many pro players when they select their decks. That if they think there's something that's very likely to be banned. Um, then they say, oh, what what decks does my opponent have if they don't ban it? Yeah. And then they trick the deck to be better on those matchups. And Firebird has got a nice turn 5 here with the Houndmaster and the Web Spinner. Uh, he is then... Uh, well, Faramir tries to put his Logi Belcher on the board. We could see that being taken out by the Kill Command, but I would still just go for the Savannah High Main here. It's turn 6 and you want to play that High Main. Yeah, I think I would go for the Kill Command as well. Uh, you definitely want to play the High Man on turn 6, um, but it just makes it so awkward uh, yeah. to deal with the opponent's ball. You're right, it makes the board so awkward. You lose 7 damage just to the Sludge Belcher if Faramir trades into your Web Spinner. Now you could think about attacking with the Houndmaster and leaving your, your taunt unkillable for the Cruel Taskmaster. Oh, he trades it like that, so... That's a little bit interesting. I think I would have preferred to have, have two no health on game. my four attack minion instead of two health on my three attack minion. And so. now it's very nice that Savannah is played. You can now take her out and then play the Savannah High Man. You wouldn't ha want to have it other way. Yeah, definitely. I think it's pretty easy just to sacrifice both of your minions. Sludge Belcher the hero ability is also possible, but doesn't no, really make sense no, at this no. point. You you have to go for the, the Savannah High Man. I think the only thing was maybe if you got uh, the seven mana beast, uh, Godzilla, off the web spinner, you maybe could have played that yeah. instead. Um, but I definitely like the high main here way more than the Belcher. And so we see next up turn eight, probably Ragnaros. Yeah, we see Firebat having Ragnaros in his... Wow, and also deck. draws Dr. Boom. Mm -hmm. Those are the cards you want to have in that matchup. Definitely. Um, I really like Firebat's deck. I think it might be absolutely identical to mine when I look at it, so um, I really like it. Oh, he even goes for Dr. Boom, even though he's losing some mana efficiency here, but he's gaining some more presence like that. I think it's because you want to test for big game hunter and then play the Ragnaros. You want to get the big game hunter or the execute the big game hunter was top decked here by Faramir. Definitely. It was exactly the <laughs> card he drew this turn and now slams it on the board, takes out that Dr. Boom. Yeah. Just almost up and yeah, he's in a defending position here. He is definitely on the ropes and has And now to do you something. feel much more safe about dropping the Ragnaros. There's much less of a chance that your opponents can deal with the Ragnaros now. So I definitely think it's gonna be a Ragnaros this turn. Well, if you want to be completely mana efficient, you could also think about a piloted Shredder and Sludge Belcher, but like that, a brawl would come in very handy here for Faramir. And it also depends on the bombs, what they hit. Because if you trade them now and they hit the Acolyte of Pain for one, that's very unfortunate. Yeah, um, it looks like the play Firebat is gonna go for is to uh, attack him with the high main and then play attack with both of the bombs. Ooh, that's nice. That's oh. nice what happens here. And he does the Sludge Belasher. He wants to stay on curve. And then goes for the Mad Scientist and the hero ability, the Steady Shot, maybe. Yeah, I think he realized that his Shredder was playing too hard on into Brawl and then he kind of changed his mind. Um, but I think this is playing pretty hard into Brawl as well, if you ask me. I mean, like, there is the one health on the, on the high main, so even if it dies, uh, you yeah. still have the two Hyenas. But, but the uh, get on is, is pretty nice here. Yeah. Taking out that high main, you draw a card from your echo out of pain. Let's see. Wow, and she draws the brawl. And now it might very well come off because if Ragnaros is being played in the then next few turns and those hyenas stay on the board, 
it's maybe an easy way to get rid of one hyena and the Ragnaros because Firebat really does not want one of those hyenas to survive if you have the Fire Lord on the board. Yeah. He could also think about trading into Baron Gaddon here. Now, if you trade into Baron Gaddon, you make the brawl 66% of being absolutely terrible. So I think it's better just to go face. Also, the Ragnaros had the option of shooting the the Baron Gaddon, which would have been a lot better, also against Brawl. Yeah, and we saw a freezing trap coming down, so Faramir could not attack with the Baron Gaddon without getting it back to its to his hand. Yeah. Uh, we can't, Faramir actually doesn't have to play the Brawl here. Yeah, he can go for the Death Spite, then the Shield Block, Armor up, and the Shield Slam on the Ragnaros and clearing the ball. He goes to 15 health then. I think you feel pretty safe at 15 against the uh, Against it's, it's midrange okay. hunter, midrange hunter doesn't have a big, uh, a big amount of burst. So um, yeah, that's true. And we've already seen Faramir deal with Doctor Boom and deal with Ragnaros. Yeah, I mean, like, what more threats can uh, can Firebat have left in his deck except the second high main? Well, he can just do the general hunter stuff. You're always adding some damage. If you maybe get a huffer, that's another four damage. He also plays two kill commands. At least that's what I'm expecting here. So he already played one, though. He so only plays one kill command. No, he played one already. Yeah, so he played one, one already. Left. But and there's probably at least one, if not two, quick shots left. Um, I would expect one. Uh, I think Fireman, uh, Firebat is the kind of guy who goes for one quick shot. Yeah, but as I, what I wanted to say is Firebat still has the possibility to whittle Faramir down here and to bring in that damage over time if he manages to stay long enough in the game. But you're definitely right, by, by taking out those big creatures, he lost his, his win condition somehow. Yeah, I, I, don't, I don't think the game is over yet. I think Firebat is still in a fine spot. Um, well, he's just one... Uh, one Savannah Highman left, and there's Alex Straza also for Faramir for the heal up. Oh, that's really good for Faramir. He can, he'll he'll still be at nine, and he probably doesn't feel very good being at nine health, but he does keep the board clear. Oh, he goes for the Alex Straza. Yeah, I think I would have waited a turn with the Alex Straza if it was me, being a little bit greedy. But uh, but Faramir is greedy, so he goes for the Alex here. Ooh, Hunter's Mark. You wish you had your Unleash the Hounds ready now. Definitely, you would have drawn two cards with the Bassard. So, Unleash would definitely have been a, a dream a dream draw right here. At least Firebat draws one card by using that Animal Companion. He just draws an Eagle Horn Bow that's not really helping him out. And we can see that Harrison Jones, so that Eagle Horn Bow is maybe not gonna get enough value here. Yeah, I really like Faramir's spot at, at this point. And now at, uh, Nim Nimj always says, if Dr. Boom is green, play it. So he would maybe suggest Faramir here to play Dr. Boom. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think so. I think you're going to go for the Death Spide, uh, clear off the board. Play it safe. You know, I will tell that Nimj that he shall uh, teach you some lessons about playing Hearthstone. You know, I say on turn 7, if you have 7 mana and you have Dr. Boom, play it. But, uh, but in this case, I, I would just go for the I totally, I totally agree to you. I'm, I'm just messing with you. <laughs> so the question is, do you want your... Well, do you want Alex Straza to be sent back to your hand farm? He decides to do so. He wants his Baron Gaddon left on the board. Will then trade into the Leoc. Well, he does go for the Dr. Boom. A little bit surprising. Uh, well, maybe he was talking to Nims before the game. Maybe. You never know. I, I mean, like last turn, you saw him go for a road defensive play with the Alex Strasser, which I think was a little bit over defensive. And then this turn, he goes with the very, um, very aggressive play instead. So. But now he's representing Lethal on the board already, leaving Firebat with 14 HP and everything he's got is an Eagle Horn Bow and the Kill Command. You can take out that Baron Gaddon if you want to with the Kill Command, swing to the face with your weapon. And yeah, just like hope it's that you the only play, right? But what can you draw? But I actually don't think I would kill the Baron Gaddon. I think I would have uh, killed the Dr. Boom instead. So the with Baron the Hunter's Gaddon, Mark? Yeah, Hunter's Mark the Doctor, and then Kill Command the Dr. Boom. That way... Um, Baron Gaddon deals another two damage exactly. to the warrior's face. Yeah, I, I don't I think totally get that. The two life matters at you, for you. Like 
I can tell you the two lives doesn't matter because Warrior can either deal 10 damage, 12 damage or 4 damage. Yeah. So the two life is totally unrelevant for you. Um, however, we knew that the Harrison Jones was there and this game was already locked up by uh, Faramir. Yeah, unless he draws into Leroy Jenkins and there's the Iron Big Owl, there's no Leroy Jenkins played in the mid-range hunter, so... Yeah. Firebat concedes here, and that's the equalizer here for now. Faramir goes up 1-1 and wins with his own warrior against the hunter that Firebat did bring to the table here. He could always have gotten quick shot into quick shot. Oh my god. <laughs> really? I've done that. On we have done some ladder play before and he was telling me like we were playing some face hunter and he was telling me, okay, everything you get to do now is draw, draw quick shot and then kill command. And I was like, number guy, really? Are you kidding me? But yeah, some very sick plays that number guy is predicting here. And yeah, we have still the mage and the hunter left for Firebat and Faramir can still play his paladin and the druid. It's also a very interesting choice here that Faramir chose the warrior. And even though we said the mid-range hunter has nice chances against the warrior, we saw it lose now. Yeah, and I definitely think that it makes Firebat a little bit upset. Uh, it's definitely a matchup you really want to win, and it's a matchup he wanted to play. And uh, his hunter deck doesn't look fairly good against Faramir's lineup now. It's pretty good against Druid, but it's pretty bad against Paladin. It's decent. It's decent against Paladin. I would still give the edge to Paladin, right? But I would say it's just a 40-60 here. Okay, I, I think I would at least give the Paladin 65. 60? Wow, okay, 5% difference <laughs> here. Uh, that's, 65 that's really is a pretty good win rate uh, when yeah, you talk it's about a, it's counters. A very, it's a very nice win rate. Uh, but uh, also for Firebat lining up here, the Unleash the Hounds is very nice to counter uh, something like Master for Battle. But Faramir as well has the Zombie Chow in his hand. He has the Knife Juggler for early game pressure and the True Silver Champion for a little bit of heal up and for also some pressure on the board and to deal with maybe a Misha or a Leo coming out of Animal Companion. Firebat for now goes for either Haunted Creeper or Freezing Trap here. I would not give that Knife Juggler to, to my opponent by just trading it into the Zombie Chow. So he's thinking about playing that Freezing Trap and he does it just now. Yeah, I de definitely can't fault him for this. It means that uh, the Knife Juggler is coming down, going to come down here and the Zombie Chow is going to come down for 3 mana on turn 3. So it kind of uh, gives away the curve for, fi for Faramir. But, uh, well, it still fits in to the curve of Faramir here because he would not have a turn 3 drop but it just delays it a bit so Firebat now has some chance to stabilize and to get into the early game as well because there was no real way for him to trade with that zombie chow and it was also awkward for him on the board. Definitely. Um, and also we can see that Firebat do have the knife duck unleashed so he can use that combination of cards to come back in the game in case he drops behind. Yeah, that's always a game changer on turn 5. If you're running, if you're facing a big board and then you go knife juggler with at least uh, 3 hounds or maybe 4, that's that's always very nice. For now he goes for that animal companion and it's a mission that's very unfortunate because we see the true silver champion in Faramir's hand. He will take 4 damage from that, but... Yeah, I think Misha was probably the worst one he could have gotten here. If he had gotten Lyak, he could have killed the knife juggler. Uh, Hoffa, he could also have killed the knife juggler, but with Misha, you can it's just gonna die to true silver. However, it is true that if your opponent doesn't have the true silver, Misha might be the best one. Yeah, that's the thing, but unfortunately, uh, Faramir had the true silver now that the Hunter's Mark is something he probably wants to keep here. Mm, this turn also does not really look good. You want to keep the, the combination of Knife Juggler and Leash the Hounds. You want to keep yeah. that for turn 5 play in combination. So And you want to keep the, the Hunter's Mark for the Knife Juggler Unleash. Uh, and you don't really want to kill any of these minions because you're gonna Knife Juggler Unleash. So. so I guess you just take out your opponent's Knife Juggler here with your yeah. Spectral Spider. She swings to the face with the steady shot. Uh, a lower tap would be really cool here for Faramir now, but he does not have one and goes for a pilot of Shredder instead. That's a nice option here. Yeah, and I think that uh, Firebat is just gonna respond with with his low fab. It's uh, just on so. curve, really good right here. Yeah, no real value here out of the knife juggler. At least you want to to make it a bigger combo, but it is gonna be punished by the Elder Peacekeeper that Faramir has in his hand. Totally, but then. 
it seems very juicy to play the knife juggler with just uh, with three hounds and you can also use it with your hunter's mark but well faramir does not even go for that he wants to play his sylvanas face tanking a lot of damage here but yeah bringing the sylvanas on the board against Probably no. She would trigger first, so yeah, that's she not would even trigger first. So not she even playing around Savannah High, man. No, I'm um, like, I guess he just wants the five-five body on the board. Yeah. Um, yeah, pretty interesting play. Uh, however, the five-five body is nice, so I can't fault him too much for that. Um, and it is gonna eat up a hunter smack here. So Firebat is very passive here in the game so far, not really putting on the pressure. I think that uh, that Sylvanas play is passive. I would say it's uh, it's an aggressive. Play. I said Firebat is passive. Oh yeah, because um, Firebat can just use his uh, his hero ability every turn and cannot really put a lot on the board. Faramir is definitely the one putting the the pace on the game here. Yeah, but I do think that it will change a little bit this turn. I think we'll see the knife jack on Lee's and then the owl come out. Um, from Firebat, and uh, he's gonna start pushing for some damage. And depending on how these knives hit, he's probably gonna attack most of them to face, I'd guess. Well, it also depends because on turn 8 we haven't seen a consecration yet. Faramir has already drawn 10 cards, will draw the 11th card next turn, so you have to think about what to do with your hounds here. Going face, putting on the pressure, definitely the right choice, I agree to that, but it's also kind of a risk here. Yeah, it, it's kind of a risk, but it, as we said earlier, Firebat is kind of behind in this matchup, uh, so I think it's a risk you have to take, and uh, Firebat always likes to take these risks, says, okay, he has it 60% of the time, but yeah. when he doesn't have it, I can win this game. Exactly, and in this, uh, in this situation it pays off because Faramir does not have an equality here to easily deal with what's on the board here. He just can play another Elder Peacekeeper and put a second Shredder on the board. And this turn, wow, That's two commands being drawn. Damage. Oh, he can't do everything this turn. Yeah, so. unfortunately, but still, I guess you go for the Houndmaster here and you should even play the kill command this turn. Yeah, you. no, I, I think you keep the kill command. Um, you can deal seven damage this turn. And then next turn, if you draw a beast, you can kill him because he'll be at seven health. And if you doesn't but draw already, beast, so many beasts are gone. We have seen one haunted creeper. But if you doesn't already. draw a beast, you can go for the Ragnaros and try and snipe him. Uh, we already know that uh, Faramir doesn't have consecrate, so unless he is to tap dig it, uh, there's not really a way for him to get through and push for lethal this turn. Again, Paladin don't have that much. Wow! Burst. But there we go. Lay on hands, healing up, and that comes in handy here for Faramir. He's also smiling a little bit. Because that definitely is a card saving him. Maybe he also gets the Vitality Totem. Maybe, that would be amazing. Um, maybe he gets a Doomsayer. That would be terrible. <laughs> that would be very terrible. Oh, did you see Alish yesterday? Yeah. Getting the two Doomsayers out of that. Wow, that was crazy. Two Doomsayers consecutively in two Shredders. And he was just turning crazy. He was jumping in the room. Let yeah. But there we go, Faramir plays the Lay on Hands, will probably trade his Shredder, the 4-1 Shredder. looking a little bit annoyed right now. Um, I can understand it, I would be annoyed as well. And wow, he gets an explosive sheep. But <laughs> that's not really good here, because if Firebat wants to trade that explosive sheep away, he will also clear the board by Faramir. It will just stay what comes out of the Shredder. Well, I think it's pretty easy, you go for the Ragnaros here. You play the Ragnaros, you hit his face, and next turn you kill him with the bow, the kill command, and the hero power. Yeah, that also seems like a turn for me, but I don't think that Ragnaros will hit face here. And he hits just an L or a Peacekeeper. The chances were just 25% if we trust Blizzard by that. Yeah, but if you trust the mass, it's a 50-50. Either you hit it or you don't. It's a 50-50 and you always win the coin flip. <laughs> so it's a 100% chance for a mass. But unfortunately, Firebat is not a mass and he's not even having the luck of his teammate. And we will now see Faramir go for the equality and easily taking care of that... Rathalos and can then even play an Emperor of Thorisan. 
Yeah, definitely looking really good for for Fermi right here. However, Firebat hasn't lost yet. He can still come back into this. He can still come back, but what does help him? Dr. Boom is not really helping him because there's a second Elder Peacekeeper. Also, the Savannah High Mains, which just run into that Iron Beak Owl. And yeah, he has to put on some pressure. He has to do some hunter magic here. The question here is, do you save the knife juggler in case you get the unleash? I guess it makes no reason to play it here because your opponent has a loot hoarder. He will just the easily trade into that. Yeah, the only reason I can think of playing it is for the quick shot. <laughs> it's true, right? <laughs> we we don't even know if Firebat plays a quick I'm shot sure in that Firebat list. Firebat has a quick shot in the list. But right now he drops down to 2 HP. Well, and that's lethal for Faramir here. You're playing that Consecration and closing it out. So Faramir, the player from Germany, is now leading against the current world champion Firebat here. And has his Druid left to go up against the Mage and the Hunter. So yeah. even though we were really liking the choice of Firebat bringing a, a mid-range Hunter to the board here, uh, we were a bit confused now because he lost two games just by that. He was punished to bring the, the mid-range yeah, Hunter. I mean, like, he lost a favorable matchup and then he lost an unfavorable matchup. And I think now he queues into yet another favorable matchup. And I think, actually, uh, there's only favorable matchups left. Um, actually, I think there's only favorable that matchups left for Firebat, so I don't think he's too upset about it. That being said, Druid is definitely a, a class that can win an unfavorable matchup, so um, not looking good for Firebat right now. And that's a pretty good starting hand from the Druid. Yeah, it's okay, but by by playing that shade here with the inner rage, you somehow lose your your tempo. And what? How do you gonna follow that up? You now have the shade on the board. Uh, well, yeah, at least gonna follow it up with the hero power, I think. But the the frost bolt is gonna come out here and deny that. Um, and we also have to say that's not a start here for for Magmage. That's not really what you wanna have. No turn two drop, just a turn one drop, just a clockwork gnome. Yeah, definitely alone on the not board. a good start for the I believe Magmates. Again, five at running Ragnaros in his Magmates. Definitely an interesting choice, I would say. We're seeing some next level deck building from uh, Firebat right here. Well, Ragnaros is a choice that you can think about. It is sometimes adding just 8 more damage to the opponent's face, so... Definitely, but I don't remember seeing Ragnaros in Magnates in any recent tournaments. Yeah, totally. It's it's a decent choice. It's, it's an interesting choice here, and it's definitely a bit off meta, but it makes sense. It's not too awkward. It's not like my Exna in in the. It's not like my 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 Exna in Midrange Hunter. You are saying? No, like my Exna in a Mech Mage because that would be oh. very awkward. You know. Yeah, that would have been weird. Um. Now he's preparing for the turn five. We already sa said it. Uh, the Druid has a lot of five drops, so he's pretty heavy on that but turn the five. But the Mirror Entity is kind of kind of gonna block them. Um. Also, Faramir might trigger the Mirror Entity with his big game handler, but as we know, Firebat has the Ragnaros and it's gonna end very, very badly for him if he does so. Exactly, and Faramir decides to give him op his opponent a Sludge Belcher, he just goes for that. And Firebat also draws into Dr. Boom, so Faramir is very lucky and happy here to keep that big game hunter, because now there are already two targets in Firebat's hand. Yeah, also that... Uh, that mad scientist might give him a, a second mirror entity, which uh, might give Firebat that, uh, which might end up giving Firebat that uh, big game hunter anyway. If and I love that play here by Faramir. He top decked the force of nature and immediately uses it to clear the board with that. You could now also think about using your sludge belcher to trade that away because it will survive and then trade into the spider tank if you want to. And exactly that's what he does. You can now use, Firebat could now use his hero ability to trade that away because there's also no no nice turn six uh, play here for him. So using the hero ability and then, but he wants the secret, right? We yeah, are on he turn wants seven. the secret. You want the secret. Definitely. You want it badly because you're yeah. expecting Dr. Boom or Ancient of Lore. And yeah. he gets a second mirror entity. Let's just check for that. Because he might also play something else, but no nah, surprises I'm sure it's here. Mirror entity. 
No surprises here. You're sure? Yeah, I'm sure. You're sure? I'm Next level sure. deck building. We see Ragnaros in the mech match and yeah, you are 100% sure. You might play Ragnaros, <laughs> but I think if you play this kind of mech mates list, yeah, you will always have Mirror Entity. And only Mirror Entity. You trust Firebat in that? I, I trust Firebat in that. Yeah. Just as I trust him running Quick Shot in his hand, you know? Okay. We didn't see it, but yeah, I'm sure I, it's I in I understand there. that. I, I totally understand that. But I am never so 100% sure because I have seen a lot of crazy things happen in tournaments already. So I'm very surprised that you can be so like, like okay, no, I'm sure. I'm sure. It has to be there. I need to be confident sometimes. Yeah, and in 99% of the cases, it's a mirror entity and it was. So Firebat gets rewarded for playing that. He gets an Ancient of Lore on his side of the board and he even decides to use nice. his hero ability and the Fireball to take out the opponent's board and to add more damage to... Yeah, he decides not to play the Dr. Boom, which I really agree with here. Yeah, the 1-1 one -one was really awkward. Um, also, if he had gone for the Dr. Boom, he would be have been heavily punished by the big game hunter. Exactly. Exactly, so taking out the opponent's board is very nice. Faramir goes for Dr. Boom himself. So, my question is, do you go for the Ragnaros here? There's basically two good mm. targets, right? You can either hit the face and put him to five. Yeah, so it's a, it's a coin flip, but you're a firebat, you're not a mass. So, are you gonna win that coin flip? Uh, right now, I got a good feeling. Right now, do you, you got also a good have feeling? a good feeling? I mean, like, here's the roll chance. I think Okay, he I got small. a good feeling, and oh no! My good feeling is not right. Well, at least the boom bot uh, hit for hit one. Hit for one, but... But it didn't matter because of the big game hunter, which exactly. is going to come down here. Yeah, probably we see the big game hunter here. There's no reason for to sure. keep it. There's no reason to keep it for Faramir because you don't expect your opponent to have the Dr. Boom following up. And also, even if he has a Dr. Boom, there's no reason not to play it. I think he's hunter. looking for lethal with the Druid of the Claw, the Savage Raw and the Swipe, but I don't think it's quite enough. No, it's definitely not enough. It's 8 damage by the Savage Raw, it's then another 11, that's 19, 20, 24 damage. You know, it's actually not that far off, you know, I understand why you would take your time counted, you yeah. don't want to miss lethal on stream. You know, that's only me who does that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, with the knife juggler <laughs> yesterday. <laughs> but uh, that was BM, I heard. Yeah. Totally planned out. 100% BM. Yes. Totally planned out. <laughs> and it looks like Firebat is gonna lose this match. Yes. A little bit unlucky, I would say. I mean, like, both his midbrains, Hunter, and his magnates is, I would consider, favorite against the... Um, Against the Druid? Definitely against the Warrior. I was very surprised to see the Hunter lose against the Warrior here. Definitely. And that was very well played also by Faramir and I'm pretty sure we will see him close it out now. It also depends if he plays... How do you play that out? You get a lot of damage here. Yeah. So you get 12 mana available. So you can play Druid of the Claw, Swipe and the Savage Roar. That's definitely possible. Oh, but look at that. We didn't even talk about the Kazan Mystic that Faramir brought to the tournament. So he prepared for some secret. Yeah, he. it actually looks like he prepared really well for exactly Firebat's lineup because Firebat has the Mage and the Hunter and Faramir has the Kazan Mystics, which is most commonly used against both of those classes. And the Boombot hits and... Wow! Firebat takes out the Dr. Boom here, the 9-2, so uh, Faramir is really, well, angry now. And I think like that, that might have been a misplay. Uh, yeah, you had lethal also by not running your Boombot into... Into the... Into the Neutron, uh, right? Yeah, you could just have run the big game Hunter into the Neutron and... Uh, yes! you would have had enough damage. Uh, so a little bit of a misplay, I would say. So how much damage would you have? Yeah, it was lethal. So even though yesterday somebody commented on our <laughs> casting where we, was, where we were saying, oh, don't criticize the players, but obviously I don't know. also... It's, it's, it's hard to be a player. You're sitting there, you're under a lot of pressure. You're thinking yes. about a lot of things. And often uh, if you're it, you're in an uncommon situation, often uh, lethal isn't the first thing you're thinking of. Exactly, and so we can go with that and saying Faramir did miss some damage here, or maybe misplayed it. I didn't even really calculate it, because we as casters sometimes also do not have the time to calculate it all through. And now Faramir 
has a Wrath in hand here, so he can kill the Snow Chugger. He will also go for the swipe to secure his board position, and he has 8 damage on the board, so the only thing Firebat could draw into this turn is either an Anoyatron to survive the next turn, or the Frostbolt to kill Faramir here. Yeah, definitely. A Firebolt. Yeah, a Frostbolt is definitely what he's looking for. But there's a Snow Chugger, and that means Faramir has lethal damage on the board, or is there... Well, you can take... You can Fireball, you can the, fireball the... Extend the, the game even further, but yeah. I do think it's, uh, it's indeed over at this point. Unless, like, you never know what kind of... What kind of tech card Firebat brought for this tournament? But well, there's the Severed Draw for Faramir here, and that means lethal. And with that, he's closing out the series, and he wins over the current world champion with a 3-1 victory here, and we, he will go up into the winner's match of that group. But Definitely. the second winner is not determined yet. We will be back with the second game of that series, with the second match of the, t of the series, and then we will find out who's going to be Faramir's next opponent. Do you so, know who's playing in the second match? Uh, yes, I know. I, <laughs> I just forgot it. Uh, but it is also in the group... Show versus Kungan. Show versus Kungan. So, either Show or Kungan facing Faramir and then the, the elimination match. Firebat in the elimination match. That's very interesting to say that. But yeah. That's not something you get to say very often. But very nicely played here by Faramir. So after a quick break, we will be right back with some more Hearthstone action. And that's the time for you to get yourself comfortable, to get yourself something to eat or to drink. And I say thank you to Number Guy joining me for commentating that game. And see you guys after the break.